The warp effect can be found under the distort category, and if we apply it to a layer, it's going to give us a number of ways that we can warp our layer very easily. And these types of warps are found in other Adobe software too, like Photoshop and Illustrator, so you might already be familiar with them. The first option we have is the warp style, and this is what changes the shape of the mesh that's actually driving the distortion. And we have a lot of options here. Before we take a look at those, let's take a look at our other controls. Under warp axis, we're currently set to horizontal, so it's aligning the distortion mesh horizontally. But I could change that to vertically, and then the arc is gonna go in the opposite direction. The next control is bend, and it's defaulted to 50, but I can adjust this to make it go in either direction. So with the vertical alignment, it's kind of bending it out or arcing it out in either direction. I'm gonna change that back to horizontal and show how that looks a little bit different. Next up, we have horizontal and vertical distortion. And if I turn the bend value all the way down to zero so that we have no distortion, and then increase one of these, you can see how that's affecting the image. The horizontal distortion kind of skews this side outwards and this side inwards, kind of like a perspective shift, and the vertical distortion does the opposite. It pinches in the top, expands the bottom, or at a negative number, goes the opposite direction. And these two distortions can be applied on top of the bending of any one of these warp styles. I'm gonna change the vertical distortion back down to zero and turn the bend back up to 50. Now that we've seen how all of these controls work, let's take a look at all the different warp styles. And I actually wanna do this on a new layer. So I'm gonna make a new solid layer by going up to Layer, New, Solid. And I'm gonna make this, let's just say 500 by 500 pixels, and I'll name it Grid. Click OK, and then add a grid effect to it. I don't need to see my logo anymore, so I'll turn that off and then add a warp effect on top of this grid. So our first warp style of arc is giving us an arc shape, which makes sense. But let's take a look at the next option, which is arc lower. This leaves the top and sides of our layer undistorted and arcs out the lower edge. But I could change that bend value to go in either direction. Next up, we have arc upper, which is just the opposite. It's the top edge rather than the bottom edge. We have arch, which is different than arc. If we switch to arc, you can see that that bends the sides out kind of like a fan. Arch pins those vertical edges and distorts all the way through the layer from top to bottom, kind of like a combination between arc lower and arc upper. Next up, we have bulge, and this pushes out in both directions rather than just upwards or downwards, so it's going to distort out or in depending on that bend value. And as a reminder, all of these can be changed from horizontal to vertical distortion if that's something you want. Let me undo that and then go to the next option, which is shell lower. And this kind of makes a shell-shaped distortion. And that's what it looks like when you go in a negative direction. And then we have shell upper, it's just the opposite. We have a flag shape, which does distort it in kind of a sine wave type of distortion, but there's no way to oscillate that. It's not animated or anything like wave warp. Next up is wave which does the same type of distortion, but it pins all of the edges. So it's just distorting the contents. And then we have fish, which gives you kind of a fish distortion, pinching on one end, expanding on the other. Rise is next, which is also kind of like a flag, but it's pinning one edge and rising up the other and doing this kind of sine wave distortion between it. I'm not exactly sure why the right edge is the one that got picked to be pinned, but that's what you have to work with. Next up is fish eye, and this is going to bulge out the center while pinning all of the edges, kind of like a fish eye lens or optics compensation or even the lens effect. Then we have inflate, which does the same thing, but it does not pin the edges. And then we have twist, which twirls around the inside of the layer without affecting the edges. And then finally we have squeeze, which is very similar to bulge and inflate, but it does it more two-dimensionally rather than kind of puffing out the center. It actually makes for a very cartoony looking kind of squash and stretch effect, which is not a bad use for this effect at all. And if you'd like to see how you could use this effect as a way to generate a more customized squash and stretch rather than just using the scale property, I've actually created a tutorial for School of Motion, which you can watch in the card above, doing just that. This effect is really great. You can make some very smooth distortions very easily and apply it to a variety of things, whether it's graphics or text, even footage. It's very versatile, has lots of options and very simple controls. But that's all there is to the warp effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.